Good morning, good morning guys. We're back at it again with another video. All right, the inside of the pump house looking a little bit different right now. So I just spent the last couple days uh, putting insulation in the walls, in the ceiling, um, lined everything with plywood, and then painted everything matte black. So I'm testing out this color scheme because I think this is what I'm gonna do inside my shop area. So it'll look definitely really cool in the pump house here uh, with the EMT conduit, the copper pipe, and the big blue pressure tanks that we have. It'll really pop off the wall there. So we're gonna test it out, see how it looks but I'm already liking it already. I'm a big fan of matte black. The inside of this is finished off um, pretty nice and pretty clean. Um, so the reason for that is like, if you're doing this yourself, you don't really have to you know, clean things up so much, but I know that there's, over the lifetime of this rainwater harvesting system, there's probably gonna be hundreds of people on tours that are gonna come and check this system out. Um, another question that I got a lot on the other video is why there isn't any ventilation or anything in here. Aren't you worried about it getting too hot inside of here? So I basically built our shed the exact same way as I did this here. So the shed is right up next to the tiny house that houses all of our solar components and um, the pump and our pressure tank for the tiny house up there. So it's basically the, the exact same way that I built it and we haven't had any issues with heat in there. And the primary purpose of the pump house is to keep everything inside of here warm during the winter time so that nothing freezes. If any of these pipes were exposed to the air, um, during our winter time, they would definitely freeze. So that's one reason why it's fully insulated and everything will be done inside of here. All right, that's enough chit chat. Let's, uh, let's jump right into it. So first thing that I'm doing here is mocking up all the plumbing pieces that is gonna be going into the shallow well pump. So it's just a half horsepower well pump. We've got an inch and a quarter PVC line coming from the rainwater tank. So we're gonna be chopping that off to size there. So right from that inch and a quarter PVC line, we're going to that inch and a quarter PVC 90. It's got threads on one end and a slip connection on the other end there. Then we've got a two inch rigid nipple, inch and a quarter union, inch, uh, two inch nipple, and then we've got a inch and a quarter check valve. Those are all really important for the system to work properly. The union is really important um, right there is if we ever have any issues with that well pump and say it needs to be replaced in 10 or 20 years or whatever, then I'll easily be able to get it out of there. And then the check valve is really important for keeping the, the pump nice and primed. So if it loses its prime, which means if there's any air um, getting into the pump, then it just doesn't really work very well. So the, I basically modeled this after different well systems that I've seen. So this system that we're setting up basically from the rainwater tank going on is very similar to how you would plumb up anything for um, if, if you had a well, for example. Um, this is pretty much the exact same setup that I've seen in, in many different ways. So we're just modeling after modeling this system after um, other, other ways that work. So now you can see that I'm getting the first two inch nipple and that union into place there um, attached to the uh, inch and a quarter PVC 90 there. So you'll notice when I'm doing basically all the threads on all these plumbing connections, I put probably six or seven layers of thread tape. Um, so thread tape comes in a couple different sizes. There's like, a, I think the half inch size and the three quarter inch size. So for some of these fittings that have really large threads on it, um, using the bigger size is definitely um, gonna give you a bit of a better um, watertight connection there just because there's just going to be more of the thread tape there. I also like to use a combination of that along with pipe dope as well. Um, I Just from my own personal experience and I'm not a plumber or anything like that but I've just kind of figured out just using a little bit of both definitely seems to be doing uh, the job the best. Uh, one other thing that I learned on this system here um, or that I learned on my other rainwater system up at the tiny house is to not use a PVC connection going into the shallow well pump. So you can see me tightening up that two inch nipple going right in there just after the check valve. Um, just with the expansion and contraction of plastic with temperature, um, I found that the, the system up at the tiny house definitely gave me some issues there. So using the inch and a quarter um, rigid galvanized pipe, I think is a much better way to connect into a well pump like that. Um, so I drilled some holes with the, uh, with the hammer drill there so that um, I could basically screw 
the uh, the shallow well pump or anchor it right to the slab there and we're also gluing up the end of that pvc slip connection removing it about 45 degrees there because someone mentioned in the comments there that that's a, a better way of doing it um, just to get a watertight connection on that pvc fitting so now that i've got all that in place i can anchor this to the ground we're just using some tapcon screws there and just screwing it right in there so now i can start getting and fiddling around here with the pressure tanks um, so I've just got some one inch T's that are going to be coming out the bottom of there. And we've got a whole host of things going on inside of here. So again, using the thread tape along with a combination of using the pipe goop there, um, just threading it in there and getting things literally as tight as possible. When the system was done and I turned it on for the first time, there's only a few minor leaks with a few of the pieces. Um, it was actually some of the things that I was installing into the uh, onto the T's here, so I think it was the pressure release valve and the and the uh, spigot had a little bit of a leak. And by a leak, I mean it was just like dribbling, like one little drop of water out of there. Um, but getting all these connections really super tight the first time around is certainly really important. And I think I've even read comments from plumbers on my channel here that said basically tighten it as tight as you can and um, just just go from there. So on the end of those one inch fittings there, there is a union there. Um, so that's why the entire thing is not being installed right now. Um, I like to use unions literally as, as much as I can, um, just because it definitely makes it, if there's any issues with anything, getting this stuff apart is much easier if there's unions um, periodically through it. So one thing that you'll see when we're doing the actual plumbing inside the pump house is that I'm using um, shark bite fittings, which they are not true unions in, in in that sense, but they definitely make it easier to disassemble things and reassemble things if there are any mistakes or any issues. So here's a little close up of what we've got going on here. We've got a three quarter inch shark bite fitting on the one side. I got some plugs um, to fill up the extra holes there because we've got two pressure tanks. We've got our pressure gauge, pressure pressure release valve and we've got all the goods in there. So to really make the inside of this look really nice, I'm just using some standard three quarter inch copper pipe. Um, in order to use this with the shark bite fittings, you use one of these orange plastic things here and you put it in there and you twist it around and that actually deburs the end of it so that it goes into the shark bite fitting a little bit more clearly. I also, sh there's also, if you could see it clearly at the end of it, um, there's a little line that was made by using that orange kind of doohickey thing there. Um, so that just gives you basically a placement on the pipe where the shark bite fitting needs to slide up to. So that last little piece there that I was installing is a check valve. So after the pump here, we're gonna be going up directly into the pressure tank. And then we want a check valve there so that um, water doesn't wanna travel back down to the pipe into the pump there. So water's only gonna travel in one direction. I already know in the comments, people are gonna give me shit for using shark bite fittings. Uh, probably first and foremost, I could have certainly sweated copper pipe to do all this. Um, and it definitely would have been a lot cheaper. It would, it would have taken a lot more time. Um, and this is also an educational channel as well. So I really wanted to show people how easy something like this could be set up. Um, if you wanted to use copper pipe and you were you know, maybe a little bit scared of um, sweating the copper pipe or anything like that. So this can show you how you can set up a rainwater system like this using the shark bite fittings. I know they're expensive um, compared to this, the standard fittings that you'd use, but it definitely saves a lot of time and it makes it a lot easier for people that aren't plumbers to have a nice professional install. So we've got that three quarter inch line coming up behind the pressure tanks there. Um, I also got some really nice three quarter inch copper plated um, standoffs, I guess you could call. Um, what I'll do for all the materials that I use for this setup, there will be a blog post on my website. So I'll leave a link in the comment section and in the description box below if you wanna check it out. Um, for all the little doodads that I got for this install, um, because I know when you watch a video and somebody doesn't list their materials, it is very frustrating um, to try to figure out exactly what they used. So right now I'm figuring out how much of an offset that I need um, to go into the filters there. Um, so what I'm doing, I actually, it was much easier to actually sweat copper pipe to do this offset rather than buying, I don't even know if they have shark bite fittings in a 45. I'm sure that they do. Um, but it was a good opportunity to learn how to sweat some copper. And a lot of people ask me, how do you learn how to do all the things that you do? 
And for the vast majority of it, I just watch YouTube videos. And there's plenty of good YouTube videos to show you how to, to sweat copper um, pipe together. It's really not that hard. Um, it goes together pretty quick. And I don't know if these are super professional looking or anything like that. It's literally, I think, the first or maybe the second time I've ever sweated copper pipe in my life. And I definitely learned a lot doing it um, because I just needed a small offset. Um, I think of an inch and three quarters or something like that. So it really didn't make any sense to use 90s or anything like that. It's easy enough just to sweat some of these copper 45s together. And there's also a really good video um, that this one guy made. I think it's called Got to Learn. And he does a lot of videos on, on, uh, uh, on sweating copper pipe. And he has a really good video on how to calculate how long those offset pieces um, need to be so that the offset is correct. And I learned a lot just from, from that video alone. I burnt the hell out of my thumb though when I, was doing the, uh, when I was doing the copper pipe. Anyways, a little modification that I'm making to these DuPont filters um, that I actually saw on, that other people did on Amazon um, so that they could see the outgoing pressure of the filter is actually threading in your own pressure gauge. So I think I'm using either a 7 16th bit or a 9 16th bit um, so that I can use this quarter inch MBT uh, threader here. So we're basically making our own thread in the top, in the plastic there. And I was really worried that these would leak. Um, it was probably the thing I'm like, this is probably, these are, these are probably going to leak because I'm making my own threads and all that kind of jazz. But they haven't leaked and I was, I was pretty happy with that. So we're just using that die there or that tap to uh, get the threads in there. And then later on, um, I will be installing the... Uh, that pressure gauge on there. So basically after a filter like that, the pressure drops a little bit. And the reason why that I'm installing those gauges is that I wanna see basically how much pressure is being lost after each of those filters there. Cause if the pressure is dropping considerably, then I'm gonna know that that filter probably needs to be replaced. So first, first filter that we're going into, I believe is a 50 micron um, sediment filter there. So that's going to collect the vast majority of things that comes from that rainwater tank. Um, that's really important just because the, the cleaner that you can get the water going into these, into these whole house filters, the longer that they're going to last. And that sediment filter, um, you can buy more screens for it, but you can easily just rinse it out. So now you can see me installing that pressure gauge there, you know, just put some, uh, some uh, thread tape on there, put some pipe dope on there, and then we are good to go. So I know these shark bite fittings are expensive and you guys are going to go nuts. Like, why would you do that? Because it's, it's really easy to install for a lot of people. This saved me obviously a lot of time installing it um, like this. And um, I just want you guys to be able to be like, yeah, you know what? I could do that. And if you're just using straight copper fittings, you would have have to install a lot of copper unions as well. And those aren't necessarily cheap. So you can kind of factor everything in there that um, you might save some money in certain aspects. Um, you, you're definitely going to save some time um, because you're not going to be using copper unions in a system like this. You don't really need to um, because you can easily get these pipes apart um, if you need to make any changes or modifications to it, which I actually had to do because I actually um, plumbed in that, uh, that water gauge right there or that water meter that you see. Um, I plumbed it in backwards, so I just start taking things apart. So now what I'm plumbing in here is the filter bypass. So if we ever want to bypass um, the filters, uh, just for whatever reason, it's really a good idea to have a bypass there. Um, if you're having any issues with them or anything like that, but you still want water going into, you know, what, where, wherever it's going into your house, into your garage or um, for irrigation or whatever it is, it's a really good idea. But those copper standoffs that I got, the three quarter inch copper standoffs are really useful. Um, now what I'm doing is I, what's really important for the pump house here is to supply water and electricity to basically the construction site um, which is probably going to be about 60 to 70 feet away for when we're building our main house here. So I'm going through, I'm using my step up bit to get through the siding, but I was very specific with where I wanted to mount it. And it may seem like the, uh, the spigot and the plugs on the outside are very high, um, but I wanted to be able to attach those to one of those horizontal purlins going across the building there. So it is going to be rock solid and these spigots are not going to be coming off the wall or, th or those outlets there. So here I'm kind of demonstrating how you can get the pipe apart because I wanted to add in 
um, another standoff or just basically another place where I can strap that pipe there. Um, one thing with the shark bite fittings is that when you're using them to go in multiple kind of planes, I guess you could say in an XYZ sense is that they're not very strong um, compared to like a copper fitting. So you'll probably just have to strap and support the pipe much more often um, just because it isn't super solid in that sense. Um, so just adding a few extra straps here and there, and then you can literally just push the copper pipe back together into the shark bite fitting um, and just go from there. And I know on my Instagram, some guy asked me like, do you hate pecs? Why are you using copper and shark bite? Do you hate pecs? It's like, no, I don't hate pecs. It's just that you're never gonna get pecs to go completely straight as opposed to the copper pipe, which looks fantastic. All right, guys, so this is first time turning the pump on here. So we're gonna prime the pump up so there's a little plug on top. We take that off so that we can fill the pump up with water. So it'll fill the pump up to the check valve there. It's good water. I didn't think there'd be enough pressure from the uh, from the pump to get that check valve going, but apparently there is certainly enough. So before we put the primer plug back in, we'll just put 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 uh, a little bit of pipe dope on it. All the ball valves are off. Um, so we should be able to turn the pump on. We might have to make some adjustments to it. There are some limits on it, um, but this pump control controller is preset at 30, 30 to 50. So let's see how she goes. So we'll get the water going through our filters here. So we're gonna purge the system, hopefully with any air. So this is gonna take a little bit of finicking around with it just to make sure that our 30 to 50 PSI is working properly. Um, so it stopped at 50, but the contact on the pump is the one that's cutting off first. So actually I want the pump troll. I want that one to cut off first and then, um, then we're good to go. And then obviously the cut in, I want this to cut in and I don't want that one to cut in. But so far, um, I'm not seeing any, any major leaks. So there's a leak on the hose bib here and on the pressure release and on this union right here. So all I had to do is just give it a couple more turns and then we are good to go. But other than that, I don't see any leaks. So none of the shark bite fittings appear to be, uh, appear to be leaking at all. So that's, that's really good. So a last little quick tour of what we got going on here. So we've got our three quarter inch copper running around. It runs up behind the pressure tanks here. So we've got our bypass here and you'll notice all the different pressure gauges. So we got that one reading at 48 PSI at the pressure tanks. And then after the filter there, we're between 46 to 47 PSI. And then this guy right here is right at around 44 PSI. Like I mentioned in the video, I plumbed this up backwards. So that's why it's at 9999999. So it'll, it's in the right direction now, so it'll start going up instead of down. And so then I'm teeing off my main three quarter inch here. Um, so that there is gonna connect down to the blue PEX right there, and that is gonna be going to the future house. So um, I've gotta do a bit of an offset with some more of those 45s, but that copper pipe goes up and around, and it goes down and outside here. Oh yeah, look at that pressure, woohoo! So this system here is pretty well done. Um, the only things that I can think about that I still have to do is for that sediment filter, um, is somehow plumbing something up there so that it automatically just charges every day or every other day there just to kind of keep that sediment filter a little bit cleaner. Um, but we've already got some bugs in it and stuff that was just drawn in through the tank there. So um, yeah, that'll, that'll be pretty cool to make that process automated. 
um, but you still have to come around and clean those filters every once in a while anyways. Awesome guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, definitely leave them in the box below and we'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon, peace.